This is BBC One in the North West. Now, Mark Ratcliffe presents Made in England with controversial artist Michael Brown. It's a ghetto, isn't it? It's a, it's a trapping... It's a place where people sneak through. A mixed race, I mean, a, you're not black, you're not white. You know, what are you? Where are you? And, and I didn't fit into any gang. And if it ruffles feathers or upsets one or two people, I just say what I feel. about independence, I want it now, I want to do what I want, when I want to do it, if I want to strip off in the street, I'll strip off in the street. Manchester artist Michael J. Brown is best known for his controversial work depicting sporting icons. Michael is an unassuming but incredibly talented artist from Moss Side. Examples of his work are all around the city, and the prestigious Manchester Art Gallery is home to one of his early paintings. I tend to work better when I can focus on things I'm familiar with. If, if, I, you know, if I did something commercial, that's why I'm a painter, a fine artist, because I paint about what I know and what you know, affects me emotionally. And the scene is sort of set back from Prince's Parkway, um, going out of Manchester, and you've got this, this row of houses, which is you know, sort of like the, the no-go zone into Moss Side, and, um, and basically I, I chose to look at it as a sort of like romanticised view because I see this etched in my mind every day because I'm from the area. Galleries, you know, can be rather set aside and, in a, you know, in a, in a, a, separate, a separate existence to, you know, for speciality viewers and... But I like the idea that art can move into a public arena, really. Well, this is a painting I did uh, so a year ago, and it's called Patriotism Knows No Colour. And I did it uh, in reference to the World Cup uh, in Germany. And basically, I did a drawing first, and I produced a painting as a result. Um, the players had agreed to post the picture, and it was, a, a, it was like a, a recollection of basically a reminder that the, the generation that I'm in now, obviously mixed race, Ferdinand's mixed race, um, Wayne Rooney's part Irish, and Churchill's part American. And it, to me, it was a reminder of this generation um, or being indebted to kind of Churchill's generation in the Second World War. We're in Manchester in Coco 2 restaurants. I've done a ceiling painting uh, of the Sistine Chapel. It's a, a copy, sort of like a, a redesigned copy, um, a small, a scaled down version, but still 2,000 square feet. And I wanted to show a kind of a, a kind of image that would say this is what I'm capable of doing and uh, to work on a scale which other artists don't normally work in, in oil paint, especially with this kind of detail. And I just committed myself to the project basically on scaffolding for two years. And it just changed things completely really. Yeah, I like the city, but at the same time, there's a lot of things that I, I can work at here for subjects and art. And I'll, you know, I'll always take this with me when I'm, you know, if I go to another location, I'll be taking my ideas that I've formulated in a, in a big city like this to wherever I go to. Michael's studio is in an ordinary house on an ordinary street in the Manchester suburbs, but his front room is home to some very famous faces. Today, Michael has a new challenge to remove himself from the comfort zone of his work with sports stars for a taste of the country life, to produce a painting that reflects England in 2008. The challenge is to create a new masterpiece to be unveiled in just five weeks. It's really an experiment in um, culture, you know, because um, my lifestyle is a bit different from what you get in, in, you know, in, in the lakes or in, in Cumbria or other part, more, you know, sort of like, well, basic sort of parts of England, more traditional sides of England. So I want to see, from my perspective, um, how, in a way, other people live in places that I'm not really familiar with. I mean, I don't know if I'm doing much work on site. I'll have to see, but basically, um, 
I'll take my camera, take loads of pictures. I might even ask people to model for me. They get the chance for photographs. Because uh, if they see an idea that I like, I can set up a scene. Because I'm sure there's going to be conflict here. And I might not be pleasing everybody, or I might, as I say, I might, am I going to come back as a landscape artist never looking at a public issue ever again? Michael's destination is Wordsworth Country, Grasmere in the Lake District. It's a far cry from the hustle and bustle of the city life he's used to. So when I was at college in London, you know, you think, oh, this is the big city, I'm going to have a great time, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to be wealthy, I'm going to have a Porsche. But really what you get is, you skint, but you walk in the streets and you're looking at all the wealth and looking at all the stuff going around you. Then you go back to your halls of residence or your little flat in Crystal Palace and sit in an empty room with little money, you know, and going to the cash point daily to get out of fiver. My inspiration won't do me much by being sat on a hilltop. Michael isn't known for painting landscapes. He's concerned about how and where he'll find his inspiration, and he's naturally apprehensive about working away from his normal environment. It usually takes Michael eight months to create a painting, and that's when he's doing what he knows best. It's day one, and research for the project starts at Dove Cottage, the first home of William Wordsworth. What I'm interested in around here is um, there's a romantic circle or a romantic ideal with Wordsworth and, and the, you know, because it's the movement that sort of congregated here during, apparently during the, the Industrial Revolution, etc. So, so I'm, I'm actually looking at uh, a way of sort of reflecting the, you know, the way people are because I retreated out of, into my work um, where I, you know, my background and basically Wordsworth retreated from his you know, setting into a private setting away from the hustle and bustle of life and into a kind of a, a place for thoughts and collection of creativity. I was actually quite shocked, but they took, you know, him and other uh, poets living here took um, opium as, a, as an excuse for, you know, painkilling, but also as a stimulant. Opium was just part of every family's medicine cabinet, and it had a number of different uses to them. It was quite unremarkable. People didn't really think anything of it. People never kind of made the associations then as we do today, you know. Sex words off as well. Did he take her? Opium as he well. would have taken it in its form as law of laudanum, uh, as a painkiller mm. if, for headaches and toothaches and so on. The great irony with it all as well, I mean, now the things that we associate with withdrawal, you know, cold turkey and so on, and the fevers and everything else that goes with it, they would see that as, as simple a reason to take opium. I've never taken any form of drugs, really, but it just shows that times don't change. At the side of Dove Cottage is the Wordsworth Museum, which houses some of the poet's original works. So this is, as I say, the, the first uh, full version of Wordsworth's great semi-autobiographical poem, as you can see the prelude, and you can see that it's been rebound recently to allow people to open it, and you can see... We're visiting the, the creator here, and the creator of the Wordsworth Trust. It is. Um, handled basically some books uh, from, you know, his own manuscripts, basically, yeah, words his own manuscripts, and one's called The Prelude. And I thought I'd see, you know, his own, his own handwriting. Well, and I've been inspired, really, about the way some of his ideas have come about and the way he's expressed his ideas. And uh, in uh, writing a poem about man's society and on human life, this became it. This is all about, you know, man in society, man with nature. You know, I've heard that he had a temperament about him as well, and uh, when he was young, apparently, the, you know, Slice one of the paintings, and you know, when he was at something like eight years of age, and he had a, a mood, mood swings. But maybe it's, it's, an, it's an artist's temperament. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils, beside the lakes, beneath the trees, fluttering and dancing in the breeze. The background research is important, but what's life like in the Lake District in 2008? A cup of tea at the great British institution of the WI will hopefully shed some light on this. I'm just absorbing my culture and uh, 
and bringing it here. So, and I'll take what I see here from my culture's eye, you know, and, uh, and, and produce something that says, well, this is how it looks to me. You know, I'm not, I'm not from around here, so it's not going to be how they see it. I can be looking at issues of colour and, and culture, and then at the other side, you know, of the corner, I'm looking at um, how the world should be and should look. You know, you know, the daffodils that I'm sort of like talking about get kicked over the next minute by someone who's walking past and they're gone. So that's the reality, isn't it? Michael is still short of ideas, and with time running out on his trip, he goes in search of some local subjects in Grasmere village. And uh, a big smile for him. <laughs> Have you done any modelling? <laughs> it's given me ideas for a painting in some ways, yeah, because I would like to have a, a, few, you know, a woman to model. If you know that's a possibility, if I wanted it as a subject, models as well actually for my projects because oh, I don't know you? what I was going to work. I'm not out. doing any new chops. <laughs> she's quite a lively character. She's you know definitely Cumbrian and she's been here for God knows how many years. A family, but I, I actually didn't believe you know when she said the regarding these uh, the products for cakes and things that the ingredients come from the West Indies. You know how would I show her if she was going to be my model for the project? Would that would she be with me? What would she be wearing? Um, it's an option. And, and it could be controversial. Today, I'm taking pictures of the landscape, uh, details of the, you know, the flowers, the plants, the earth, the kind of undergrowth, because it, it could be part of a painting, I'm not sure. I'm taking as much as I can on, the, on this trip, so I can basically uh, see what um, you know, I've got to use in the painting, because if I end up doing a painting that features figures in the undergrowth or, um, the surrounding, I've got it from words of garden, basically. Bridal Mount was words of time for 37 years. He came here and, uh, and died here, you know, sort of spent uh, most of his life, best part of his life here. Uh, he called it his most beloved home. He loved being here. It was a family home. Uh, he wrote a lot of poetry from here and revised a lot of his poetry. And he also became Poet Laureate to Queen Victoria. The, the, the most obvious one, the daffodil poem, um, if, you, if people read into that, what they want to read into it, you know. Now, whether Wordsworth meant all of that, you know, mm. that it would appeal to everybody, or that would sort of be uh, an attitude that everybody would adopt, I don't mm. know. I, 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 it could have been just a very simple... I mean, really, Dorothy Wordsworth is the person that started the daffodil poem because she sort of wrote about the uh, daffodils of those water, mm. and, and, and he developed that. Mm. I've had quite a bit of inspiration, yeah. I mean, well, today I've met this gardener who's worked this ground 20 years, and you've got on the one hand, you know, uh, words of sort of like talking about being, you know, embracing nature, and you've got a gardener who may not know much about Wordsworth, and he's literally got his hands in the dirt, and you know, he's uh, maintaining the gardens that Wordsworth has designed. Tell me about yourself at all. Uh, well, locally born and bred, lived here all my life, married with two children. Uh, we don't know. It shows a contrast of lifestyles for me, you know. Um, like the Nike hat. <laughs> the working ethic, the artist's ideology, you know, the city ethic in Moss Side, and artists like me sort of living in the clouds. Well, I've, I've not been here much at all, so it's new to me, and I've never really related to the people, so I never looked at it from this perspective. I've been not, not forced to, but yeah, from an artist's point of view, I've been forced to look at it in a different way. And um, I'm surprised, I mean, I, I, what it does, it gives me something to bring back and create as a, as a project, a work of art. Michael's research is nearly complete. He has his inspiration and the subjects for his paintings. Now, he just has to pull it all together for a photo shoot.
Uh, Tony, take your coat off. I found a gardener who was 70 years of age, more or less. He's been there 20 years, working on the grounds of Woods of Scarden. I found a lady who, you know, got generations in her family who worked a, a business there for, well, I don't know how many generations now, but it, she's a good example, again, of a traditional way of life. And, and on my side in Manchester, I've got an example of a friend who uh, runs a samba school called, well, Tony. And he plays, you know, music from another country, he's a teacher. So it's like a mixture of, you know, two sort of ideals which has been building up throughout the project from, from the beginning since I started it. And uh, it's given me an idea for a painting already, it's all sort of coming into place. In Michael's mind, Tony provides the link between the city and the country. He'll be offering his West Indian spices for use in Joanne's secret gingerbread we'll recipe. But he'll want something yeah. in return. As if we're doing it I suppose it does seem all a bit strange with yeah. the yeah, poses absolutely. that we've, we've actually done this morning. But it's been, it's been fun and, and Michael's such a, a really nice guy. It's been, it's been really good, it's been really interesting as well. And it's going to be interesting to see the finished product from what we've done this morning. Lean in a bit more, Tony. Yeah. It's quite amusing because when you, as I say, when you see people together and they're thrown in from cold into a situation, you know, it's quite hard to get, you know, the, the feeling, you know, the environment going, but it's working as a composition and it's settled down quite well as, it, as I've taken more pictures because it's seen the funny side good, of it. Because yeah. there is a kind of suggestive element about the painting, but at the same time That's it's good. done lightheartedly. So you don't look so stiff. <laughs> 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 There'll be things that he sees that I think, do I really look like that? So, <laughs> it's a bit of trepidation, but I'm sure it'll come out as a, as a, a good work of art. Well, I'm going home now. Um, I'm going to get off with it, well, sort my painting out, get all my materials together, and I'll get straight onto this, uh, sorting this canvas out and get a, an image sorted, yeah. At his studio, Michael needs to focus. He has three weeks left to get his ideas from his mind and onto the canvas before the unveiling. Well, I've reached the stage now of getting back here, I've taken all the photos and I've gathered them and I've printed a lot of them off on the computer. And these sort of pictures help me to gather my composition and the idea for the painting, which I'm obviously going to try and do now. And um, I've spent days basically um, choosing the photos and composing them in, in sort of like which I'm going to use, you know, what I'm going to use, what expressions I might use for the picture. And, and I've got to basically just draw all those in on the canvas. I've had to sort of like basically position it, grid it up slightly so I know where my figures are. And then I've got to create the subjects now. So we've got like a, a scene on a bench, sort of a, a sort of like the bottom of a garden. I'm going to use images of steps from Wordsworth's garden. Um, different views of uh, Joanne and Tony. It sort of like, you know, sh shows what I'm trying to do with the painting. Time is in short supply. And having spent almost a week sketching his idea onto the canvas, Michael is finally ready to start painting. There's all, you know, lots of things to think about, like the lighting, how, you know, light the colours are, how dark they are, what, what the mood is, and that you, you can't always gauge that early on in a picture when you're still just putting you know, paint on canvas early on, you don't know what mood you're going to get, so that comes, you know, the, the mood of the painting comes much later on and that's where your rewards are. If I could get, you know, the time on it, I would, that, you know, there's a lot of interest in my work because I spent more time on them in the past, because I can raise it to a level which is more appreciated. And so another ten months would do it. With the deadline looming, Michael is working round the clock. Really, it's about getting it to look like a painting as quickly as possible, which is, it seems to be working. And then I've got to work on the textures and the stones and the grass and the leaves and. Obviously, I'm working in the city normally, so I normally paint portraits and footballers and boxers. And now I'm, you know, producing something that's based on a landscape, which I don't normally do. So I'm having to find out about, um, you know, techniques that I don't, I'm not familiar with and, and build, you know, techniques to sort of work out how to paint grass and mud and stone. Point is, is I'm losing the, the, the position, the situation I was in. I've got to kind of get it in my mind and use all my photos 
to reflect, you know, this kind of English feel and the dampness. Um, but I'm in my bedroom in a, you know, in a flat, sort of, you know, so many miles away, so I'm not exactly in the same, you know, sort of like setting, am I? And the best part was obviously in the portrait, because, you know, you've got, you know, all the, the, sh the hair and where you have a shave and the light and so many colours in dark skin. Skin you can sort of like, you know, uh, it, it's hot and cold colours, so you can get different kinds of, uh, you know, challenges going on. And to be honest, Caribbean skin's hard to paint than Caucasian skin. Michael would normally have eight months to complete a project. This time, it's been a matter of weeks. It's only hours before the unveiling, and the pressure is starting to show. Really tired, actually. I've just, well, I'm having about four hours sleep a night the last couple of days, and so, um, and I'm unveiling the painting tomorrow, so it's nowhere near done. And um, I'm just trying to do as much as I can. But uh, basically, I've uh, been working on the portraits. Um, I'm walking around the house like a zombie, I'm not eating. Well, I'm just stopping to ask something to eat. Um, Nipping out to the shop, coming back again, carrying on. And I'm just in autopilot in a way. I know what I'm doing, but I just can't, you know, it's just the energy level's gone, gone down, really. But um, as you can see, it's coming on. But this, to me, is the beginning of a painting, not the finish of one. Get the height right. This side, as you just carry it on. Yeah, we're going now. Should be there in a couple of hours, hopefully. Um, painting, if it survives the journey, which it will do, I'm sure. We've got it fastened to the truck properly. And, um, you know, it's still wet, obviously, so that's why I've covered it up in its blanket. So much side. More than 70 hours of painting and working through the night has finally caught up with Michael as he travels back to the lakes. I'm thinking about the unveiling now, though. I can't wait to see the reactions of uh, Tony and Joanne when they're showing a romantic uh, scene on a, at the bottom of a garden. And uh, obviously, you know, uh, the families involved as well will be quite interesting. So, you know, I don't know if they're going to, you know, they won't expect what they're going to see, but I'm looking forward to seeing the reactions, to be honest. He's not there, you know. <laughs> Excitement is in the air as the villagers start to assemble at Rydal Mount for the unveiling. Joanne's husband is especially interested to see what his wife's been up to. I think it'll be modern art. Do you think but I don't quite know what it'll be, but I think it'll be modern art. Have you seen any of his work before? No, no, but just meeting him tells me that it will be modern art. I have to say, I'm quite intrigued, actually. Um, I have wondered about it. I've wondered uh, how the lakes might have influenced him and his time at Dove Cottage. So, yeah, I'm very curious to see it. Excited and a little bit apprehensive. <laughs> I'm sure he'll do a good job, but I'm just wondering what, he's, what exactly which pose he's going to use. A little bit apprehensive, yeah. you know, wondering what's going to be behind there. Mm. Uh, and my children are here as well, and it's, you know, I wonder what their reaction's going to be. <laughs> the moment of truth has arrived. And Michael is more than a little anxious to see how the villagers will react. OK, thank you for coming today. It's uh, been a pleasure to do this project over the last five weeks. And, you know, I couldn't have done any of this without, without you and uh, how, you know, your involvement. And it's been a bit of research I've been doing, so... And the, the result, basically, is a painting of uh, my sort of exploits, uh, looking at Manchester life, where I'm from, and the li life in the Lake District, and taking examples of, you know, major features and elements about the late and, and the local people who've been here for generations. So I'm going to um, ask uh, Eden and uh, Yasmin to um, uh, drop the curtain and so you can have a look at the final painting, the result. It's not quite finished yet, but it's, you know, it's well advanced. And would you like to drop the curtain? So. There we are. <laughs> what do you think, Tony? About the uh, I, I'm thinking it, what doesn't come over in the painting is how cold it was that day. <laughs> I know, well, it's, not, it's like a nice summer's day, isn't it? it now? Does, yeah. Have you been painted before? No. You haven't? No, so this is my first, first time being immortalised in canvas. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do you, want, do you want what do you think? Um, it's fabulous, yeah. It's it, 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 obviously from the photographs and obviously doing the, the, the modelling on the day and everything and, and knowing obviously what was going on between Tony and I and, and, and the rest yeah, of you what, guys. What's going on? What's going on? <laughs> I can, see, I can um, see the look in Tony's yeah, eyes there. Yeah, 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 well. you, you really captured you I really just captured copied what I saw. <laughs> <laughs> Really, you really captured that. Well, you know. <laughs> and also, I look a lot slimmer on there, so I like it. <laughs> Did you I, I was really taken by it. I, I love the way that the artist has got the two people looking into each other's eyes, and I like the way obviously he's brought the city and the country together, which is something that Wordsworth would have been very interested in. You know, he loved the city for Westminster Bridge, but he didn't like the city for Bartholomew Fair. So this is bringing the two together in a really very nice way. I'm not expecting it. I must say, I must admit, I could see the top of the tree. So straight away, I was thinking, yeah, it's kind of either a biblical scene or kind of a classical scene. Um, also, going on Matt's previous work as well. So, but yeah, I was surprised. But I think it's a beautiful piece. Really. I like it. Uh, I, I like the fact that um, it, he's captured so many aspects of what actually happened on the day. From, because he's captured that moment after we were both giggling like mad because I couldn't take it seriously and I was, I was nervous because I'd never met Joanne before and it's caught that moment when we do actually look into each other's eyes. I think it's, I think it's wonderful, I think it's fabulous, I love it um, and I think for me and maybe for Tony but the actual what is captured in those expressions, you know, if we, if we rewind and look at all the footage from when we did those photographs and everything, he's just captured those expressions on our faces and what how we were looking at one another and that, that's just amazing and, and and you just keep wanting I keep wanting to have another look at it all the time you know I can't take my eyes off it it makes it look very pure and uh, and me knowing Joanne it's just a, it leaves a wry smile on my face and I do I think it's fantastic the way he's got Tony the gardener walking is exactly how I've known Tony for 15 odd years you know and it's it, so he's captured that really well, and I, and I just think even the, the tree, the old midler tree, which has got a little bit of history to it as well, um, it just sort of reminds me as if I'm walking through the garden itself, you know. It's been a whirlwind journey for Michael. He's been inspired by a part of England that he knew very little about, by Wordsworth, by the Lakeland scenery, and by the people of Grasmere. The experience has changed his idea of what Englishness is, and he's pleased with what he's created. <laughs> I wasn't surprised by the response, but I mean, um, because the basic picture was all there, the stories were there, the ideas on show, and, and the, it's a light-hearted painting, you know, it's not too self-indulgent, it's quite tongue-in-cheek, but it's a pre raphaelite like you know, it's a sort of, sort of um, done in a humorous way, but with quality. I think this painting does sum up England in 2008 in the sense that we've got two different communities from, you know, one from the uh, Grasmere area, the Cumbrian area, and one from the city of Manchester. And it sort of puts the two lifestyles face to face. And I'm hoping that it kind of, you know, well, it asks a question, doesn't it? And it also sort of shows how people relate to each other in, in, in this country now. For more information on Michael Brown, visit our website, bbc.co.uk slash made in England. Next here on BBC One, we mark Passover with a special programme following British Jews emigrating to...